Tell us about the time you saw Glassjaw at the Palladium with Deftones. Uh, it was the first time uh, I saw Glassjaw. I went to the show uh, specifically for them. I was a, I was a Deftones fan for sure. Like I, I still love the Deftones to this day. Um, I remember seeing, I saw Deftones like I think it was like a year or two before that at the Palladium as well with Quicksand. Um, I wish I knew what Quicksand was about at that time. Like at that point they were still just the opening band. Like I'm not gonna pretend like that's not Quicksand. <laughs> I was right up front, knew every word, but. Uh, so I went to the show, um, really excited to see Glassjaw. I think it was, the, I want to say it was the first time on the West Coast. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, they were first of three. Um, the record had just come out on Roadrunner. Um, and I, it, it spoke to me like no other record had. I was so excited about it. So I went to the show, lost my mind during their set. Um, I still remember Daryl in between songs screaming uh, lyrics to a Vision of Disorder song which NVOD was like the first hardcore band I ever got into. Mm -hmm. So like watching my watching my new favorite band and then him like quoting lyrics from uh, my favorite hardcore band, I was just like, this is the best night of my life. And then That's afterwards awesome. I, I waited around in the parking lot like a fanboy and um and and talked to Daryl. I told him how much his band meant to me and all that all that type of stuff and, and he was really sweet about it. Um, and then <laughs> since then uh, from that time until now, like whenever I'll see him, he, we're still like pals in that in that sense of like we'll always talk and catch up and stuff mm -hmm. real sweet guy i think i saw you crowd surf at the echoplex show yeah 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was funny like i i got up as soon as i was surfing towards him i saw him like smile really big and we give each other a hug but yeah he's he's i i have i don't think i've missed him on the west coast um i think i've been to every single gosh show on the west coast even because with them touring so little now mm -hmm. you know like they'll play shows every now and again it seemed to have worked out to where like when i'm actually home is when they seem to book a show and it works out so it's awesome even the avalon show you went uh, to yeah years ago yeah 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 that's crazy uh the time i saw them after the time they came back after that death town show they played the whiskey mm -hmm. um and it was it was like super hardcore show it was awesome it was uh earth crisis glass jaw strife and drowning man wow uh, yeah and like if, if there's there's like a handful of shows in my life that I say like if I could relive any show like that's in my like top three like just to go back to that show would be so cool and you're a big Earth Crisis fan too you love Earth Crisis is that how you were inspired to be straight edge yes yeah I uh, I was really into metal um, I still like a lot of metal but I was like a total metal head yeah. in junior high through high school or through most of high school and um and uh, I got an OzFest 96 compilation, <laughs> and uh, the VHS of it um, has, like, a song from each band, you know, whatever that's featured on the compilation. Mm -hmm. And uh, it has Earth Crisis on it playing Gamora Season Ends. And, uh, no, no, I'm sorry. It's, uh, it's um, playing uh, Broken Foundation from that record, Gamora Season Ends. And I just remember watching it, like, this is more aggressive than anything else on this on this like there's nothing melodic about this at all it's just <laughs> it is just relentless and, and they all have their ex their hands x like what's this about so i remember looking into it and being like oh like i don't do drugs i don't drink i have never had any interest in doing any of that stuff like well i guess this is for me and then i you know from that found victory records which at the time was a great label mm -hmm. um you know found Snapcase and blood lead and dead guy and and strife and all, all those bands that just you know ended up getting me into hardcore getting me into straight edge all that stuff speaking of victory records tell us about inner strength uh the <laughs> victory records zero one um was a band called inner strength which uh, actually the vocalist is uh sean lopez of uh crosses crosses and far exactly um, I, I found that 7-inch because far for the longest time and they're still one of my top favorite bands of all time mm -hmm. super fanboy for so like I would you know I miss the time when, when you found music by reading liner notes you know things like that like, yeah totally uh, where you're like oh I can, or you just know that this band or you see a band wearing a t-shirt of a band and you're like oh now I'm going to listen to that record or <laughs> find that record I remember getting that uh, getting that ordering that 7-inch from, from Victory Records uh, I think it was their um it's actually like a like a mail order thing, you know, like not on the internet, like a mm -hmm. mail, like you had to send a check or send a money order with the thing, and I, and I got it, and I was so excited. I, when I still see that 7-inch, like, in stores randomly, yeah. like, I always want to buy another copy, but just because <laughs> it's so cool. It's so cool. And I've become, uh, Sean actually lives in Burbank. Okay. Um, and uh, we we go to the same Starbucks, so we'll, 
we'll randomly talk for a little bit. Um, and uh, I've actually never punished him about that. I should <laughs> probably bring that up to him next time I see him. You totally you know? should. I own both versions of that. I even own the, uh, like, uh, it's like a white cover. And I think it might have been like a tour press of it that I found in the Whoa. store. Yeah. So is that what started your vinyl collection? One of the first seven inches. Okay. Uh, that and also far related. Um, far put out two split seven inches with Incubus, which is pretty random. Uh, I, I heard about this, but yeah, I don't know much. Yeah, it's because uh, both bands were on Immortal Records, and I think mm-hmm. at the time it was just a way of, of like a promotional. You know, it was like a, I think it was kind of a promotional item. I don't know if they were ever actually like a store item. Mm-hmm. Um, but I got both of those seven inches and Immortal Records put out a comp. Uh, it has far corn. The Urge and Incubus, I think, on it. Wow. Uh, and it's, like, hand-numbered, which is also random. But I bought that for far as well. So I think those were my first, like, four or seven inches. Wow. Yeah. Well, let's change the topic a little bit. Let's sure. talk about Touche Amore. Eh? What I was the... talking about records all day. <laughs> this is fine. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, what was the first Touche Amore show ever? Uh, we played a house show in Pasadena at a place called the 580 House, which was uh, a punk house that lasted a couple, of, I think, a couple of years. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, we played with uh, a band called Broken Needle, um, and uh, yeah, it was just you know first show, so it's always nervous. And um, had a, I, I still there's still pictures from the show. It's crazy. Like there's so many friends there. Um, uh, the pictures look a little more fun than the show probably was for people because it was like <laughs> probably hot. Just because we yeah. we played our songs, and then the only time we ever did a cover song live at the time was uh, we did an American Nightmare cover at our first show. Oh whoa! And uh, so we played like there's pictures of people like going off, and it's like yeah, that's not to our songs, it's to the cover. But uh, <laughs> it's it's funny like um, our friend uh, this kid Joe Joe in one of the pictures he's singing along it's cool to look at now because Joe sings in a band called No Limbs which mm-hmm. is the next release on my label so it's like it's cool just you know same, cool. same circle wow you know? that's crazy yeah so when you look back on the old days of Touche Amore and you look at now how have you grown as a musician? Um, I mean uh, I think just it's a matter of like knowing your limits I guess mm-hmm. I'll say that uh, um, I think you I was, well, this is actually kind of funny. I uh, we have a friend named Chris Avis who's filmed. He, we call we we call him a, a TA his, leader of the TA historian the historical society because uh, he's filmed like he I think he has like over over like fifty shows that he's like posted oh, on wow. YouTube. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he's great. Um, and he has footage from like some of those first shows. And uh, I was watching one the other day, uh, and I was just like, man. We would play like one song and then like stop and have the tune and it, it would take like 15 <laughs> minutes to play five songs and our songs were a minute long it's like this is i was so bad like couldn't keep up could, like was so out of breath and now now mm-hmm. you know on this tour we're playing 24 songs uh and it's just like you know you just your body gets used to it so yeah i think i think just a tolerance for <laughs> for shows is probably the, the only thing that's really fully evolved and also i know how to scream better whereas before mm-hmm. i would blow my voice out after you know a 10 minute show whereas i just sort of understand how to not destroy myself i guess yeah yeah and when you were writing this last record you had just turned 30 during the writing process yeah um has your perspective changed from being a 20 year old person to now absolutely i, I mean i don't think that has anything to do even with the band i think that's just a life as, as just a life thing yeah um yeah you uh Start, yeah, just like from small things like not taking things for granted that maybe you used to when you were when you were younger. Uh-huh. Um, uh, realizing that the smaller things aren't aren't as important as the bigger things. Yeah, you know, just picking your battles, things like that. Uh, I think those are probably the biggest life lessons that I can think of off the top of my head. You know, were you ever into Warp Tour growing up? Uh, no, um, I went to one of my one of my bands uh, years ago. Uh, played a uh, like we won like a battle of the bands and we played like a it was called like the DIY tent god it was like 2005 oh they had a DIY tent at work yeah, it was called like the <laughs> DIY tent or something like that and it was funny we won the contest and we show up and they're like yeah you help us set up the tent and we're like we just won a contest like we have to wait what like, oh I that's not fair put things together <laughs> like I know it's called the DIY tent but is this just like a trick to help you <laughs> help me out to do this um but uh so we did uh, so that year I went and also uh, and Thursday was playing that year um, so for me I looked at it like a like a freeway in to go mm-hmm. see Thursday play um, and I think I might have gone the year after because against me played um, 
but uh yeah um as for like the lifestyle of it though like no i uh, it's not for me yeah hot hot parking lots not, yeah not my scene i went to the ventura dates because it was at least like on the beach sort of area a little, yeah a little cooler out yeah do you need something oh okay no you made me nervous because you came over and you were like staring at me. <laughs> making sure okay uh prior to warp tour <laughs> uh, you were talking about secret voice yeah what was the inspiration for that for starting your label I something I had just always wanted to do um, I figured if I wasn't in a like I, if I'm not in the band like I want to do something you know I want to do something as much as I can to like mm-hmm. give back to to whatever that's why I, I've worked at a record store for years I still when I'm home will work at a record store now and again um, but I always wanted to do a label um, but obviously like financial needs and time is a is a hard thing yeah um, so luckily the people at uh, Deathwish help make it possible they're I'm a subsidiary of Deathwish which means that uh you know I get to find the bands and and tell them about the bands and you know sell them a little bit on why I think it's a good idea or whatever and they they're nice enough to believe in my vision about it and then uh they make it happen they'll you know they cover the manufacturing and the distribution of it and they handle all the distribution and those orders and all of that while I get to just kind of have all the fun with it, which is great, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, I, I hope it benefits them, too. Yeah. Um, but I'm having a really good time doing it. It's uh, it's really fun. Like, I love getting the record, you know, getting the test presses and <coughs> working with the bands directly and all of that. And everything that I've put out so far, I'm so incredibly proud of. So, What do you look fun. for bands? Uh, what, do you, what qualities do you look for in bands um, that you sign? I don't know. Like, I, I guess just... Um, Origin, not, I mean, originality is a great thing, but like, just kind of that they have the, uh, an actual spirit about them. Mm-hmm. You know, um, you could tell that there's a drive in them that they, or that they're doing it for the right reasons, yeah. and, and all these sorts of things. Or just like, if it's just incredibly pure. Um, the first band I put out was uh, Single Mothers, which is a band from Canada that actually opened for Touche in like 2009 or 2010. Our first time in Canada, at um, 2010, and they were like the first local band on the show. Mm-hmm. And I was, like, setting up merch, you know, like, not really paying much attention. And they started, I was just like, this is, what is this? Like, yeah. and I walked over and I watched the whole set just, like, in awe. Like, this is the most punk, real thing I've I've, I've seen in forever. And got their demo, loved it. And then reconnected with them a couple years later. And uh, and I, I, they gave me their new demo. And it was incredible, and that's what ended up being the first seven inch. But I didn't want to. I just didn't want to give it to, you know, maybe like I didn't want to just give it to No Sleep or give it to to Death Wish or something. And just be like, here, I think this is good. You should put this out. Like I believed in it so much that I was like, I want to be a part of this. Like I want to do what I can to make people hear this. Mm-hmm. So um, that's that was the the driving force. So what do you tell young musicians to get to the the level that you're at? Uh, you know, I I have like a few. Whenever, you know, like, a, a kid now and again will ask me, like, like oh, I'm in a band. Like, well, how, how do you make people hear your band? Or, or what do you recommend? And, like, from just playing in so many bands that, that never really did much mm-hmm. um, to, to <coughs> starting this band with, with like, okay, I've learned enough, like, do's and don'ts. Like, <laughs> we're going to do this right. And first advice I would give is don't overplay your hometown. Like, only play when necessary like if you if a band that you're a fan of is coming to town and don't shoot for high dreams don't be like oh we're an indie rock band so or like we're an alternative band so let's try to play with weezer you know like, <laughs> yeah like start start on a smaller scale but like if a band that you like is coming to town make friends with whoever the promoters are in town and try to you know be like, be like hey like do you mind if we think we can open up the show and try to play with bands that come to town that you can that you're not too far off from so that if someone comes early to the show they'll see you and be like oh cool because no one wants to come see you play every weekend you know you That's can't so convince your, you can't convince your friends like hey I'm playing the same venue that I played at three times last month like you want to come <laughs> out like people, you're going to burn out your you're going to burn yourself out in your hometown and your friends aren't going to want to come see you anymore um so that's a really big one so just play when necessary few and far between and then as soon as you have enough people interested in your band like you know it sounds so corny but like honestly the internet is really important you know Mm -hmm. like promote yourself online make people you know do do whatever you can to make people hear your band and then when you feel confident enough start trying to play shows outside of your hometown and then you know best of luck